Hi everyone, I am Aki. Today I would like to tell you about Japanese jewel steel Tamahagane. Tamahagane is a premier steel used in Japanese swords. The method used to make Tamahagane is called Tatara Iron Making. The Tatara Iron Making method was once considered a lost technology. Let me give you a brief history of Tamahagane. Tamahagane has been produced for over 1,400 years in Japan. Tamahagane has been considered one of the purest steels, but the process of making the steel was not cost effective. In 1876, a sword ban was enforced in Japan and the industry shrunk rapidly as a result. To make matters worse, Tamahagane steel was replaced with affordable foreign steel in the 1910s. In the end, the production of Tamahagane was completely halted in the 1920s. Fifty years later, Hitachi Metal Company and the Swordsmith Association formed the team and revived the Tatara iron making in 1977. Nowadays, a few individual swordsmiths are able to produce tamahagane by themselves. I had the opportunity to witness tamahagane being made by a swordsmith named Sketada. As far as I'm aware, there are only two swordsmiths who can make tamahagane by themselves in the Tokyo area, and he's one of them. Now, Mr. Suketada is trying to remove the impurities called Noro. If Noro comes out in the form of liquid, it is a good sign that the Tamahagane making is going well. Even though Noro is in a liquid form, most cases Noro gets stuck at somewhere near the bottom. So you have to create a path for Noro to come out using the stick. How to make tamahagane seems quite simple. At first, they make tatara furnace. And then, they put charcoal and iron sand alternately and set a fire on it, heating it up to 1200 degrees Celsius. As it reaches 
1200 degrees Celsius, impurities become liquid and go down to the bottom. Every now and then, the impurities are removed through the hole at the bottom. When the impurities cannot be removed anymore, it is time to take out the tamahagane called kera. It may sound simple, but if you were to try to make tamahagane, in most cases you would fail to control the temperature and remove the impurities. There are many types of iron sand and charcoal, so choosing the white ones is really difficult. Additionally, you have to adjust the size of the charcoal since the size affects the temperature inside the furnace. When you burn the charcoal and iron sand, what happens inside the furnace is oxygen reduction. The oxygen inside the iron sand is replaced with carbon from the charcoal by heat. In this way, the steel gets carbon and the iron sand forms steel. Carbon ratio is essential for making a high quality knife. In knife making, there is a hardening process called quenching. If there is no carbon in the blade, you won't get any harder. Therefore, the amount of carbon in the steel will significantly affect the quality of the knife. What makes Tamahagane special is its purity. When steel is made, they burn it up to the point where all the iron becomes a liquid form, making it impossible to remove the impurities. However, in the case of Tataro iron making, they burn the iron sun to 1200 degrees Celsius where the steel is a semi-solid form while the impurities are in a liquid form. This allows them to take out the impurities while making Tamahagane the purest steel available. If you make a knife from Tamahagane, you will be able to enjoy many kinds of natural patterns on the plate like hamon and jigane and so on. There is no way to mass produce tamahagane and there are only a few who can make the steel but I hope this tradition and technology will pass down to the next generation. To save this tradition I opened up Tamahagane Kitchen Knife online shop. If 
you are interested, please check out uh, thenknife.myshopify.com. I also put the URL on the comment section. I really hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.